Hi, this is Pete Levin, and you're watching The Art of Music Tech. I'm not a techie, and the technology to me has always been like this with music, because I'm about making music in so many situations, and the technology is just a tool. Uh, and what had been happening in, in the 70s, what I was doing was very elite. Nobody, nobody had synthesizers that they could take to Europe and play on live gigs and improvise. The 80s, that changed. Uh, the DX7 came to New York. I had the first one. You know, a year later, there were 500 of them in New York, and everybody was bringing them to sessions. The studios owned them. So uh, it became more accessible. The cost came down, and uh, everybody had the stuff. In fact, I was not getting some calls that I used to get. I didn't start to learn anything till I got out and, and started to work, started to play with, with people, and, and then went. When Gil Evans put me in the band, it was square one. I mean, I, it was like starting over. I mean, I had something to offer the band. And Gil liked what I was doing, which was, I've never had a bigger compliment in, in the 50 years or whatever that I've been doing this. But, uh, it was just learning experience all, all, all the way through. And especially doing it for that amount of time there's something of Gill in everything that I play now. Uh, but finally, after the two of us wandering around separately for 30 odd years uh, in recording studios and on stages, uh, sometimes playing on each other's albums, uh, I'm talking about my brother Tony, he's a great bass player. Uh, I played on his albums, I, he's played on mine, I played in his band, he's played in my band. We toured with Paul Simon together. Uh, we play in a local Woodstock band, Uncle Funk, <laughs> together. Uh, we have never done a project from scratch. We took, sat down and said, you know, I was thinking about this. Would you be into doing this? Uh, I said, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. And what we went back to was uh, music that we listened to when we were kids. Uh, I was a French horn player in high school, uh, and I was getting jazz recordings uh, by Oscar Pettiford, who was a great jazz bass player. Uh, again, this is another year, and Oscar's long gone, but he played with all the greats in jazz and had his own bands too. Eventually, I believe, ended up living in Paris because uh, it was difficult for black musicians to get work here. Uh, I was underpaying if the other New York City had the cabaret laws at the time. You had to have a cabaret card or you couldn't even play in New York. Uh, Oscar put together a great quintet, uh, the piano bass drums, of course, with a great sax player and a French horn player, Julius Watkins, who was playing jazz like nobody had ever done it before, maybe nobody since then. Uh, and, uh, here I was learning classical French horn, and I was listening there. Man, that is something, and I would try to imitate him. Uh, I talked to my teacher about him. My teacher was, was with the Boston Symphony, and he went, nah, jazz. I said, okay, I gotta listen to that. So I was playing the records constantly in the house. Tony didn't care about French horns, but he heard the bass. He heard the bass player, and he credits Oscar Pettiford as his inspiration to start playing the bass. 